Hello and good morning or uh, good afternoon from depending on where you guys are dialing in from. Uh, my name is Kyle Hutchison. I'm a sales manager over here at Trey and one of our two co-hosts for today's group demo. I'm uh, joined by my colleague, Stuart Frankie. He's a senior solutions architect. Um, and today we're gonna go through uh, some slides as well as uh, take you guys through uh, a demo of the product. A big point of today's group demo is for you to ask multiple questions and get your answers live in the product, um, as well as you know any question that you have, feel free to type it in. We have an automatic workflow. Uh, so depending on uh, if, it, if it's not the right uh, time to answer it in today's session, you will get someone who will follow up with you. Just in terms of a high level agenda, what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna run through a few slides, give you a little background on the space that we're in, uh, as well as kind of you know, what's Trey doing differently and kind of a little background on us as a company. Then we're going to spend time in a demo. Uh, we're going to go through a high level demo of the platform as well as focus specifically kind of on some e-commerce use cases today. So just to give you a little background on the space, uh, this, this space has been called multiple different things and has, it still has a lot of different names. You know, you hear iPass, middleware, integrations, uh, ETL, uh, no code or low code, different templates. But the, the whole idea is there's a lot of different software platforms on the market and you need to find a way to connect them in order to get business done. Uh, if you look at the green line, you can kind of see uh, where this market has uh, started and kind of evolved to over the years. So on the, the left side, you see companies like IBM, Tip, Tipco and Informatica, companies that are started you know, in the 90s offering this type of software, big, heavy, duty platforms on-premise and sold primarily to IT. Uh, to disrupt that market, in the middle there, you got companies like MuleSoft and Apigee, where it's mostly on-premise, but you know, starting to adopt the cloud uh, as I was starting to become mainstream. Uh, still primarily sold to IT, pretty complicated uh, software. And you need some specialists for their software. Um, but if you really think about the last 10 years, you know, APIs have really become proliferant. Cloud computing is the norm. Uh, and if you think about all the different departments, uh, there are so many softwares that we're using today because we're building specialized for every little thing. Um, and what that is causing a need for in the market is what we're classifying as citizen automators. And what you need is a general automation platform. Uh, just these piece, these like little band-aid middlewares aren't gonna uh, suffice anymore. You need a, an automation platform. And uh, the next slide is, uh, coming from Kleiner Perkin Internet Trends, and this is back in 2017. Uh, if anyone's familiar with these, these are run by Mary Meeker. She does an analysis of the entire market. Um, it's really impressive sessions, but uh, it, you're looking at how many different software platforms are in every single department in a company. So your HR and marketing, some 90 different software platforms. And if you think about those two departments, not necessarily have you know, engineers dedicated to build out these integrations. Uh, nor are uh, they, they're, they're like cost center. So it's like, uh, they're not gonna be driven these integrations. So you need a platform to really enable these teams to connect all their platforms to, to run efficiently. And so that's where a platform like Trey comes in. You need something that's you know, flexible uh, and powerful and can scale on the back end. You know, when you're talking about hundreds of thousands of calls, um, but it's also easier to use where you don't need uh, you know, it's not required that you have a coding or a software background. Uh, you can drag and drop an interface where uh, you can connect different backend systems and drive automation. So it's, it's not just connecting via integrations, it's actually driving actions in these different platforms and connecting platform A, B, C, D, et cetera, and so forth. Um, but then what really comes into question is the uh, you're, you're putting your platforms onto our system. And so uh, it's about security and trust. And we've gone through you know, comp comprehensive security compliance. We're talking uh, SOC 2, Type 2, GDPR, HIPAA, you know, different security two-factor authentication and just an encryption, encryption across the board. So uh, if you have any questions there, we're happy to walk you through that in more detail. But th these are the type of platforms that we're talking about. Uh, you want to have... Uh, we, we classify each of these automations as workflows. Um, you want to be able to Slack alert yourself or Gmail alert yourself, but then connect to your different project management tools like Asana, 
Um, but then your backend systems, whether it be AdRoll for retargeting and advertising, as well as like Marketo and Salesforce platforms that you host all your data, as well as your, you're sending out thousands, hundreds of thousands or millions of contacts. And you need to be able to quickly use that data, put it in the right place and make sure the, the appropriate business logic is going on so you can drive these different business functions forward. And kind of on the, on the previous slide, you know, we have different what's called uh, connectors to all these different systems. And you'll see once we're in the product, what that looks like, but the extensibility of which we can connect to all the different platforms out there, we can either build those connectors for you. Uh, we have over 300 in our marketplace. And one thing that's really different about Trey is we don't charge by connector. Uh, once you join as a customer, you have access to all 300 of those. So you're not pigeonholed in any specific area. And with those slides that we're looking at before, with some 90, you know, up to hundreds of different software platforms inside an organization. We think that's a really big competitive advantage, but we also have what's called universal connectors. So we can universally connect to a, a whole host of different platforms out there, as well as having a very powerful CSV editor. So think about if you're, we have a MarTech East, a bunch of people over there this week in Boston, uh, you know, uh, when you're coming back, you have hundreds of leads that you want to get uploaded to your sales team. You can have a, a CSV editor populate that get into Salesforce and get some automated campaigns as well as, you know, different reps notified quickly. So I always like to spend just a second on this slide because it really talks about what I was mentioning earlier. You're not pigeonholed in any specific product by, we offer all of our connectors um, <laughs> and the, the ease of use and the speed of which you can drive uh, automation forward on our platform. You really have uh, the ability to pull automation into all these different departments. So if you look at like marketing, you're talking about lead list ingestion that I just mentioned, but then you can take it further with like personalized, personalized email, data enrichment, you know, happy customer detection. The use cases really go on in both marketing and sales because you can just pull automation where you, you couldn't before because it's much easier to use, but then also support, think about every support ticket, all the channels that you manage. Um, typically support reps need to recreate that critical information into another ticketing system automatically get all that ticket created. You're saving these support reps a lot of time. Time is money in that space. So you really want to move quickly. And just talking about ease of use, scale of our platform and the extensibility really, really can pull our platform multiple directions. And as Trey, we're a company that's really going to back you up. We're attracting customers from all over the board. We have fortune 500 companies like Aero Electronics, uh, uh, IBM and SAP, uh, fast growing companies like Intercom and Segment, you know, companies that have recently gone public like Lyft, but just all over the board across multiple different departments. But today, um, I want to talk, we're, we're going to focus a little bit more on e-commerce. We've had a, a, a lot of traction in this market. Um, and if you think about what we're doing, uh, it, it's perfect for e-commerce because with e-commerce, you have operations and backend systems that need to exchange data and you're constantly updating very massive data sets. Uh, some of you guys might notice I'm wearing a hat. One of my favorite customers I signed up, Vori Clothing down in San Diego. You know, they've been a, a just a very comprehensive builder's arm platform. And we're actually going to focus on a few of their use cases. So we're talking about uh, batch updating of your entire Shopify store. Maybe you're, you're doing tag management or inventory updating. These are typically jobs that you run at night. Uh, or kind of throughout the day. And then uh, what we're also going to think about is how you get your information from Shopify uh, when orders are actually taking place to your backend systems like NetSuite. And then what's common in e-commerce is uh, what a lot of you are asking for is connecting to what's called a 3PL, so third-party logistic providers. So once it's in NetSuite, orders are processed, you need to get it to the warehouse and shipped out. Uh, so we're going to kind of go through uh, those two things today. Uh, and just a, another example is like uh, the platforms, not just Shopify, we connect with Magento, big commerce, Magento one and two. And what a lot of people are asking for now is, is that step where it's like, we got our uh, initial automation done with our, this platform. What else can we do with Trey? And so we were talking about like from Magento, uh, maybe you want to pull up uh, and get that information about your customers into a CRM. So we, we work with Dynamics, Zoho is coming up quite a bit more. So a lot of retailers are working with Zoho, really easy platform to work with and it's flexible. And uh, <laughs> then uh, you're able to put those in email campaigns and put them out uh, just across the market. Uh, so different CRM. So like I mentioned, Zoho, uh, Net, uh, NetSuite, 
Salesforce, HubSpot, and it doesn't stop there. E-commerce, we're really excited by just all these different use cases that we're pulling into. Before I hand over to Stuart, I always like to mention one, actually one of the first uh, e-commerce companies that I signed up is uh, they have really expensive products that they're, they're sending out and uh, they wanted to adopt a rental model, but they're really scared because you know you had to hire a lot of backend people to get the system rolling correctly. Um, <clears throat> but so the idea was you have a, you know, say a two, $3,000 product and you wanted to return it. Uh, when you bring it to the, the post office, they connected with the FedEx API through a company called Shippo. So when you scan the barcode uh, on the back end using Tray, it would go to that third party logistic provider, it would fill out a couple things, and then it would connect to Zendesk on the back end uh, and then notify the customer. So after dropping off this very expensive item at the post office, within about 30 minutes, you got notified that here's the process, here's when you can expect payment, uh, and these are the steps that we need to go through. Uh, just a fantastic customer journey. And that guy has also gone wild with our platform. He's almost, he, last I caught up with him, he's looking to rebuild his entire ERP and backend systems using our platform. So really excited to see what we're gonna do with an e-commerce, but that's enough of me talking. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna hand it over to Stuart. Thanks Kyle. All right, I will share my screen here. We'll jump right into um, the use case that we're uh, on tap to show today, which is the, the e-commerce uh, style use case. So essentially, as Kyle kind of teed it up, we're gonna look for you know, taking your customer data um, from, uh, you know, from a Shopify, from Magento, from you know, kind of your front, or front store um, interface that's gathering things like orders, you know, um, notifications from your customers, et cetera. Um, tickets, et cetera, that all those things can be kind of gathered, listed, retrieved, and then pushed into back office systems, CRMs, um, any, any system that you're using to kind of manage the rest of that customer lifecycle. And so you'll see here, uh, we'll start with the, the Tray.io home screen. You'll see this is my own account. Um, as you see listed here, these are, these are several workflows I've built over the course of my demos. A workflow would be associated with an integration use case. So if we wanted to create a net new workflow here, we can call this uh, Shopify to NetSuite. And again, we have dozens of e-commerce uh, services as well as uh, ERP or back office systems. So you can kind of use whatever uh, application uh, you have within your stack here. But to highlight today, we'll use our Shopify and NetSuite um, connectors. And from there, when I create the workflow, it'll bring me in the first step and that's adding the trigger. So uh, this is what'll kick off the integration, what'll start the workflow. There's a couple of things um, we see here around e-commerce. Um, one is we could schedule the, the integration to run, you know, as often as every minute, but as uh, Kyle said, every day, maybe you have a nightly process, you need to go and grab inventory or go and grab, you know, new customers that were inbound from that day, you know, loop through them, process through them as needed, and then push those to be customers um, with orders in your back office. We also have a webhook URL, so essentially an endpoint that we can um, host ourselves on the Tray platform, and you can push events over to us in real time. Uh, we have an email trigger, so we can receive things like an email notification, or you know, if you're receiving uh, maybe from a third party uh, service that you're using for fulfillment or what have you, um, receiving a CSV from them or a report, um, any attachment we can import into Tray from an email that a workflow receives, and process through that data in the context of the workflow, pushing that to the disparate services that you need to, ha to house that data. You'll also see that we've uh, pre-built some triggers around pretty common applications out there today. Um, you'll see Shopify is one of them where essentially we can listen for you know, certain events to occur in that platform, such as orders are created, you know, uh, ship shipments are started or um, orders canceled, et cetera. Those events will push over to us in real time will then you know, relay that to the uh, appropriate uh, systems that need to take action when those um, you know, customer events occur um, in real time. So I'll go first into a scheduled trigger uh, here. So I'll click into that uh, and it'll bring me into the workflow builder. You'll see at the top, we have the first step being the scheduled trigger. If I click into that, uh, that first step, you'll see over here on the right, we'll have our properties panel. And so every step within our workflow we'll have the configurations um, on the right here for us to you know, specify what we want the, the step in the workflow to actually do. Um, you know, so from here I could say, 
Do I want this to run every day, every month on a given interval, maybe every 30 minutes, I wanna kick this off. And on the bottom right here, when I hit enable, all the steps we configure here, then the canvas will run through at that cadence. Over here on the left, I can start searching for specific connectors that I wanna bring into the, the workflow. And so from here, I could go and search for Shopify. I can go and search for Magento, for Amazon. Uh, you know, Whatever your e-commerce kind of front end is, it's interfacing with your customers, go and find that specific uh, connector, click and drag it to be the next step in the workflow. And over here on the right is where I would set up my Shopify connector in this case, right? I use an authentication here that I already have available to me or set up a new one. And we always recommend that you're gonna use sandboxes where appropriate, Shopify does provide sandboxes to its customers. And so, you know, it might be best to set up a sandbox, test and build with that, and then easily just flip over to another uh, set of credentials when you're ready to move to production. At that point, once I've set up my authentication, I would have access to Shopify's open API, remembering what we're, what we're using in the trade platform and these connectors are these applications open APIs. And so the way we interface with that API is through this operations dropdown list. We can go and find most likely retrieving data as that first step within our workflow. So I can maybe search for a list operation and go and find the specific type of data that I wanna pull out of Shopify on that 30 minute cadence. So that then I can you know, ultimately push that into you know, my disparate applications that, that need that data. So I go and find, you know, maybe orders or maybe customers um, and click on that specific operation. You'll notice that, you know, th these are now the configurations associated with this operation, right? So I could specify any additional fields that I want to grab, specific IDs of orders. Um, you'll notice in here, we can also specify when the order was, or uh, sorry, customer was created, right? So it could be um, at a minimum of, you know, yesterday or even, you know, from this 30 minute workflow 30 minutes ago, right? And so we can start passing in this data dynamically into our call, into our list customers operation to, to be able to make this workflow dynamic over time. Every 30 minutes, I go and grab the, the relevant data from the last 30 minutes. Um, and then you'll see at the bottom here, we'll have a preview of the output of what this operation is going to bring back from a data perspective into the trade platform, right? So it'll have a list of customers here each customer will contain, you know, addresses, um, you know, phone, all these pieces of data that you'd expect on your customer record in that application. And then we can see kind of right off the bat, what we can use in the context of the workflow to make decisions off of, ultimately picking out the data points that we need for other systems to then uh, use uh, within, within their context. I'm gonna rename this step to be list customers as well, so that if someone comes into my workflow, they can know exactly what step, um, you know, which, which each step is doing. I can also describe the step in more detail as well. So at this point, uh, you know, if once I list my customers, I may want to use a combination of these core connectors in yellow over here on the left to build business logic around, um, you know, specific records and ultimately process through each customer record one by one. So the way I can do that is click and drag the loop collection over here to be the next step in the workflow. And the way I can configure this loop is by using the output of a previous step. In this case, we, we have Shopify data already in tray, right? It's running, it lists customers as our first step. And the next step I wanna do is go one by one through that list of customers to then process uh, on an individual basis. And so the way I can configure this loop collection is by clicking and dragging the input of the list to be the output of that Shopify connector You'll see here the, um, the list of customers comes up. When I click on that, I'm dynamically now referencing this data that's pulled back from Shopify. You'll see here the output of the loop is now the individual customer that we saw before in the Shopify output. And now I can have a good sense of, okay, on the individual basis, I can use these exact data points to now um, you know, process further as I need. So I could rename this to be loop customers as well. Um, and then from there, uh, we'll have you know, a combination of these core characters to maybe make additional business logic around. So if I wanted to pull in you know, a Boolean condition or a branch condition, et cetera, to process different customers in different ways, I could use that um, as my next step. And then going back to the individual customer that's stored in the loop. So every time we go through this loop, we'll go one by one. Each customer record will be evaluated within this Boolean condition. And so if I wanted to look at a specific piece of data to be true or false, I'd go back to that individual customer, 
I would go and find whatever that piece of data I want to look at here is, um, equal to, not equal to, smaller than, in a list, et cetera. So if it's equal to this, then you know I go down my true path, otherwise false. And I can come over here now to my uh, NetSuite uh, connector or any other back office system that you'd want to use, pull it into maybe our true path here and go and create or update the relevant data on that side of things. So similar how we set up uh, the Shopify connector, I'd need API authentication set up. And then from there, I would have the access to their API um, through this operations drop down list. So to be able to go and add record, upsert a record, update a record, um, right? So maybe it's adding a record of a customer type um, and then you know adding in the fields here. So I'd say, I want my, my name of the customer to be in there. I want the address, right? All of those pertinent pieces of data that you would need within NetSuite um, to create an actual customer in your back office. Um, so that point, it's really just a field mapping exercise between the Shopify data and the NetSuite uh, connector. And so the name, I could click and drag that value to be something that's output from my uh, Shopify connector, right? So I would go and click on that uh, address as well. I would pull that in whatever I need um, to be to be input there. Um, so uh, you know, all those data, all those data fields we could we could map over. So this would look like maybe a batch process that you would have running every 30 minutes or every, you know, every uh, day or what have you. Um, what if you wanted to have a more real time integration, right? So as those orders are coming in, as those customers are created, you know, I need that data to be in my back office or in my CRM in real time. And so what we could do here is basically switch out our scheduled trigger to be utilizing our real time Shopify um, trigger here. So I'll click into this, uh, and this concept is something we see as a trend in the in the application marketplace, where you know, applications are noticing that it's very beneficial for them to notify in systems of a data event occurring in that platform, right? So in Shopify's case, when an order is created, um, but if you look at a CRM, right, it's very important to maybe know that an account or opportunity is closed, right? So different data events. Um, you know, those will be kind of relayed out to, in this case, our workflow, which then we can use Trey to orchestrate, you know, and route those events as we need to then push to different systems um, based on the context of, of, of that data, right? So in this case, we might look at our Shopify trigger. Um, we'd set up our authentication. We can listen for all topics, or I could drill in for certain topics as well. And so Again, very common with the, the webhook concept, with the real-time triggering concept, to allow users to filter out specific um, types of records that they want to be notified about um, in real time. And so I could look at orders created, orders fulfilled, um, you know, checkouts, products, any of those specific data events to occur, um, right? So maybe if my inventory level is updated, I want that to be a notification that I receive at this workflow. I could add as many topics as I wanted as well. Um, and then from there, it would just be as that record or as that data event occurs, it's going to push it over on an individual basis to Trey. And so we most likely won't need a loop collection because we won't have many records or processing. It's really just one record coming in. And so I can clean this up a bit here and make it a lot more linear from a flow standpoint. And the next step I might want to take is using our branch connector. So I can click and drag that to be the next step in the workflow. And I could look for specific types of events or topics to be, you know, of certain values. And so the way I could use my loop, uh, my branch connection here is by clicking and dragging the value to test to be that topic right there. So if it's orders, right, created, then I might want to go and do something you know, different or, uh, you know, within my NetSuite uh, application than I would with a customer created or, um, you know, an inventory level updated, et cetera. And so I would just set up as many branches as I needed um, to handle those different events. Uh, and then as they occur, they'll you know, push over to us and we'll then just bring in our NetSuite connector directly here on a branch one. Maybe I want to go and um, for, uh, you know, any other uh, events, maybe a customer is added. I want to bring in Zoho, uh, my CRM to branch two, right? And so it's, it's you know, finding out what that topic is, what those events are, giving the, the contextual data in real time to my finance team in NetSuite, 
to my sales team in Zoho so that they're able to you know, have that data pertinent to them showing um, you know, in real time. And so at this point, it would just be a matter of similar how we saw before, adding a record in a NetSuite, creating a record in Zoho, um, creating a specific record, right? And we would just have kind of a field mapping at this point between Shopify inventory updated or customer created and then moving over those relevant um, data points to our, to our end applications. So at this point, I'm going to take any questions we have um, on this specific uh, use case or workflow, but then any general questions we have along the trade platform as well are welcome. So I think the first question here uh, is around, does Salesforce support custom objects? Uh, yes, it does. So we have essentially a Salesforce connector um, here that, I mean, I do have a sandbox that I can show um, real quick on how it would be interfaced with in, in Tray. Um, so you'd, you'd set up your authentication. You could have sandbox, dev, a prod, whatever. And then from there, once you have your authentication set up, um, it'll go and pull your uh, organization's record types here. So it's going to pull back all of my standard and custom objects. Obviously, I have quite a few, so it's thinking for a little bit. Um, but you'll see in here a list of all of the objects I have available to me as a user uh, within Salesforce. Okay. All right. So um, another question we have here is um, we cannot lose any data between systems. What happens when one system is unavailable and how do you ensure that data does not go missing? Yeah, good question. So um, there's, there's quite a few, um, there's, there's quite a few ways to, to, to kind of alert someone within Trey or, uh, you know, go about knowing that a job is having particular issues, right? So we do have this concept of a debug log. And as you execute the workflow, um, you know, over time, you'll start spinning up log executions within uh, this panel here. And so you can see in here kind of at a high level, I want to see if a failure of a specific um, you know, step is occurring or if you know, any failure is occurring. And so we kind of have our own query language there to kind of go in, see from a workflow health perspective um, what's going on uh, from a failure standpoint. We also have alerts available uh, within workflow. So you could say, you know, when this workflow fails, I want to notify our alerting workflow within our account um, that, that an error occurred, right? And so you'll have different, um, you know, kind of metadata around what failed around, you know, the, the workflow step name, the workflow URL, um, everything kind of be used to kind of give that uh, no, notify person the, the context that they need to debug um, where the failures occurred. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and it looks like a question, and sometimes we get questions like this uh, coming in from uh, May, um, asking about a very specific uh, use case that's important to them. Uh, May, uh, just we, we can touch on it, but uh, I'll have uh, one of our uh, sales reps follow up with you right after this call, um, and we can set the time to go in more detail, um, asking specifically about Autotask and Rike. And anyone else who's on the call, we're, we're at time, but we're going to run over and answer all these questions. If anyone is uh, interested, uh, you know, follow-up items, you have any questions for us, feel free to type them in. We have an automated workflow, so you'll get assigned to your appropriate point of contact here at Trey, and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll follow up with you today. Um, so, uh, Stuart, you want, there's a question coming in here uh, regarding Cisco. Can, can you see that one? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, so uh, Merrick is asking here around um, you know, the, the specific on-premise connectors. So I think one thing worth mentioning around those are we do offer private versions of specific connectors. So if you have an on-premise system um, that, you, that you'd like to connect to, we can deploy a connector privately, or um, we can also use our universal connector. And so this comes up quite a bit around when we may not have a pre-built connector already built out of the box, um, this can be utilized to connect to really any endpoint out there um, that's exposed over the internet, right? So essentially, we would be able to go in a generic sense, you know, get, delete, uh, post to when any, any URL you want. So if you're on your on-premise side, 
um, you know, able to expose an endpoint that we can go and, and leverage with this. Um, that's one option. We also have a lot of um, you know, different ways to connect to that may not be a traditional API sense. So we can connect to like an FTP client. Um, we can connect to different file repositories like Google Drive or Dropbox, Box, et cetera, um, you know, that, that may have CSVs or text files uh, populated in, in those kind of repositories. We could pull those down from wherever they're stored and then essentially import it temporarily into Tray using our CSV editor. So what this does is, is create kind of a, a temporary table on our side of all the relevant data. And then from there, we can manipulate it, like adding columns, adding rows, um, joining different uh, CSVs together, uh, you know, running functions across uh, different values, et cetera. So there's, there's tons of options around um, kind of getting, um, oh, another one is uh, the, the email trigger, right? So if you had like a scheduled report or, or extract that you wanted to run, um, you know, from your on-premise system, we could have it email to our email trigger and then process it from there. So um, quite a few other options if that traditional API route is not available. Perfect. And uh, I have to make sure I'm not, uh, I have to answer this one. A uh, comment coming in from Paul. Uh, I know he wrote, he's not sure if he'll be answered on this call, but uh, the specificity of kind of what he's asking is, uh, is exactly a workflow that I built for myself. Um, so he's hoping to see kind of a workflow using G Sheets, um, an example of exporting from Salesforce into G Sheets on a weekly basis. And I see Stuart smiling just because yeah. uh, he, he helped me build this exact workflow. Um, we'll, Paul Wolf, I'll tell your, uh, your account manager and he can uh, follow up with you specifically about this. Um, but basically, I, I built a scheduled workflow to actually run every 30 minutes updating new accounts. Uh, to be dropped into G Sheets. And I did it for my sales team. Well, I'm a manager now and I, I wanted their whole pipeline to exist in a G Sheet account and then update every 30 minutes. And so we we're using uh, the step in there called data storage to basically note the, all the accounts that we pulled in the last 30 minutes. So it's only new accounts are being added. Uh, then we can, it's a, it's a data mapping exercise where you just map them to all your rows. And then the nice thing too is I have all of my guys updating that spreadsheet. And then the nice thing is all they have to do is click a webhook. Uh, so we have a universal webhook and it's, they just save the webhook. It's just a, a new tab they open that kicks off the workflow. And then it will loop through all the columns on the G sheet that I deem kind of like necessary or that we are gonna update. And then they move them all right back into Salesforce. So it's pretty much a, a dream uh, workflow for any sales rep who you know, hates doing admin and it helps sales management because we know all the information is up to date. That might not be your specific use case, but it's entirely doable. Uh, so I'm not technical by any, any means, but I was able to build this on my own uh, just with some assistance from uh, Stuart and uh, we have another sales engineer in here called Thomas. So we'll definitely get you uh, some uh, resources there. 